spacious skies for amber waves of grain for purple mountain majesty above the fruited plain Milton Pauls Thompson Festerson Gurnett Mr. President. Here. Would everyone please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance and remain standing for our invocation today by <laughs> Councilmember Amy Melton. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'd just like to, to take a moment um, and just have everybody make sure that you're watching out for people not only on, on bicycles, um, but also on motorcycles. We've had a number of motorcycle accidents in the last couple of weeks, and one of them being a, um, a, a good friend of mine, Rachel McKetto, who's in the hospital. Unfortunately, her boyfriend didn't make it through the accident. Um, she's doing much better, but, and you know, it, sometimes it's, it's vehicles' faults, and sometimes it's the motorcyclist's faults, but if we could all just be more aware on the streets, um, and I think Councilman Jerem actually talked about this just a couple weeks ago, if we could just take a little extra time. Um, if you see bicyclists that are running in the road, I know it takes, a, you have to slow down a little bit, maybe go around, wait for them. Um, but in the end, if we can maybe go the rest of the year without having an accident with a bicyclist or a motorcyclist, just keep an extra eye out, um, slow down, and you know, let's all be forgiving of other people if they make it to a meeting a little late because they just took a little extra time to get there. Um, so with that, let, let, let's do that, and I, I, that would make me a lot happier, and I think the rest of the city. Thank you. <laughs> city Clerk serves as publication of the Daily Record, the official newspaper, September 9th, the North Frederick Council, and regular City Council meeting September 13th, 2016. Current copy of the Meetings Act is posted in a white binder on the east wall of the legislative chambers. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this meeting of the Omaha City Council. The council thanks you today for joining us. As a courtesy to those in attendance, we would ask everyone to please turn off or mute any of your electronic devices. Mr. Clerk. Uh, Transit Authority budget, uh, item five, Transit Authority of the City of Omaha transmits their request for budget year 2017. We need a motion to receive and refer to finance. So, uh, we got we have a public hearing. No, we don't have public oh, hearing. We don't. Okay. All right. It's so moved and seconded to a, to approve item six. There's no further lights. Roll call. Five. Item five. All right. I'm sorry. Roll call. Jerem. Yes. Milton. Yes. Paul. Yes. Thompson. Yes. Festerson. Yes. Burnett. Yes. Mr. President. Yes. Five is received and referred to finance. Item six is resolution that the Transit Authority of the City of Omaha Board certifies to the City Council of the City of Omaha, one half of their total tax rate for the year 2017 to assist and defray all character of expenses of the authority. City Council certifies to the county clerk of Douglas County that same amount. It's 5.226 cents. Thank you. Public hearing on agenda item number six is today. Proponents, please. Seeing none, are there any opponents? Seeing none, public hearing is closed. Is there a motion? Second. Roll call. Jerem, yes. Milton, yes. Paul, yes. Thompson, yes. Festerson, yes. Garnett, yes. Mr. President, yes. six is adopted, seven to zero. Item number seven, resolution that pursuant to Nebraska revised statutes, the city council hereby certifies to the county clerk of Douglas County the number of cents and fractions thereof which the city of Omaha desires to be levied on each $100 of actual valuation upon all taxable property within the limits of the City of Omaha for the year 2017 for the purposes as follows, 47.992 cents for the City of Omaha 2017 budget. Public hearing on agenda item number seven is today. Proponents, please. Seeing none, are there any opponents? Seeing none, the public hearing is closed. Moved, Moved and seconded to approve item seven. No further lights. Roll call. Jerem. Yes. Milton. Yes. Paul. Yes. Thompson. Yes. Pesterson. Yes. Garnett. Mr. President. Yes. Seven is adopted. Seven to zero. Resolutions are reprimanded by the Platts Subdivision Agreements. Eight, nine, and ten are one case. Eight is resolution from Mayor Platt entitled Hannah Hannah, located east of 67th and F Street. This intersection is hereby accepted. A Planning Board and Planning Department recommend approval. Nine is resolution of the Platt entitled Hannah Hannah is hereby approved. 
A planning board and planning department recommend approval. And 10 is the subdivision agreement providing waste shed or watershed management fees and waiver of the right to protest the creation of future sidewalk improvement districts thereby approved. Public hearing on agenda items numbers 8, 9, and 10 are today. Proponents, please. Seeing none, are there any opponents? Seeing none, public <coughs> hearing is closed. We've been seconded to approve items 8 through 10. No lights. Roll call. Jerem? Yes. Milton? Yes. Paul? Yes. Thompson? Yes. Festerson? Yes. Garnett? Yes. Mr. President? Yes. 8 through 10 are adopted. 7 to 0. Pursuant to City Council Rule 7E, agenda item number 11 should be laid over two weeks to September 27th. A special use permit. Item number 12, resolution special use permit application for a special use permit allow general sales in a General Industrial District located at 9445 J Street is hereby approved. A Planning Board and Planning Department recommend approval. Public hearing on agenda item number 12 is today. Proponents, please. Seeing none, are there any opponents? Seeing none, public hearing is closed. Is there a motion? Second. Moved and seconded to approve item 12. No lights. Roll call. Jerem? Yes. Melton? Pauls, yes. Thompson, yes. Hesterson, yes. Garnett, yes. Mr. President. Yes. 12 is adopted to 7 to 0. Pursuant to City Council Rule 70, agenda items number 13 through 15 shall be laid over two weeks for publication and public hearing. Liquor, item number 16, Last Call Saloon, 4302 South 42nd Street, Class C liquor license, new application, new location. Public hearing on agenda item number 16 is today. Proponents, please. Uh, Mr. President, uh, Mike Kelly, 7134 Pacific, appearing here with the applicant. Uh, we're here for any questions. This is a neighborhood tavern. It's been closed for, I don't know, six months to a year, and they're going to just continue the same type of operation it was in the past. And we're here for any questions. Thank you. Are there any other proponents who wish to be heard? Seeing none, are there any opponents who wish to be heard? Seeing none, public hearing is closed. Mr. Grenat. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. Payton? Yes. Just for the record, put your name on the my name is David L. Payton. <clears throat> address, please. Your address? My address is 4903 Sunset Drive, Ralston, Nebraska, 68127. Thank you. Going to be on a main thoroughfare there. Yes. And, uh, I grew up in that neighborhood. That was my next question. <laughs> I thought so. All right. Um, so that you're familiar then that there are a few set of eyes that keep a, a close watch yes. on that. Yes. And they are not, uh, the majority of those eyes are not bashful about calling authorities. And I don't and, have a problem with that. Uh, and I noticed uh, in your application that uh, there'll be uh, constant supervision on the management level uh, when this uh, facility is open, is that correct? Yes. Okay. Uh, I didn't see anything that sent up any red flags. I wish you all the best. Make a motion to adjourn. Thank you. Approved. <laughs> yeah. ha happy hour? Second. Yeah, we can go straight there. <laughs> I tried. Thank you. It's been moved and seconded to approve item 12, I mean item 16, and no further lights. Roll call. Close oh, I, I closed the public hearing, didn't I? Yeah, I thought I did. Public hearing is officially closed. <laughs> Mr. Green has had his question. It has been moved and seconded. No lights. Roll call. Uh, Jerem. Who's yes. the second? Melton. Who's the second? What? Uh, Pete. Oh. What's the Pete. Pete. Yeah. I think maybe I'm moving too fast. <laughs> I did ask for opponents, yeah. Moving like a Buckeye. Why, thank you for that, Doc. <laughs> Uh, roll call. Jerem? Yes. Milton? Yes. Pauls? Yes. Thompson? Yes. Festerson? Yes. Grenat? Yes. Mr. President? Yes. Jerem passed the second time for a potential conflict of interest. <laughs> 16 is adopted. 601 passing. Item number 17. Herbie, Herbie Saints, 1934 South 67th Street. Class C liquor license, new application, new location. Public hearing on agenda item number 17 is today. Proponents, please. Good afternoon, Mr. President, members of the Council. My name is Sean Kelly, 7134 Pacific Street. Pretty day on behalf of the applicant. Here to answer any questions you may have. Thank you. 
Are there any other proponents who wish to be heard? Seeing none, are there any opponents who wish to be heard? Public hearing is closed. A motion? Second. Moved and seconded to approve item 17. No lights. Roll call. Jerem? Yes. Milton? Yes. Pauls? Yes. Thompson? Yes. Festerson? Yes. Garnett? Yes. Mr. President? Yes. Jerem passes a second time for potential conflict of interest. 17 is adopted. 601 passing. Item number 18, Ty Pepper, 631 North 114th Street, Class I liquor license, no application, no location. Public hearing on agenda item number 18 is today. Proponents, please. Hi, uh, my name is Ann K. Kane. I'm joined by Robin Kammerer, and we are taking over Ty Pepper, which was previously owned by my mom, who has decided to retire after 22 years. Uh, we're here for any questions you might have. We're just taking over and applying for the new liquor license. Thank you. Are there any other proponents who wish to be heard? Seeing none, are there any opponents who wish to be heard? Seeing none, public hearings closed. Ms. Melton. Oh, thank you. I know we spoke on the, on the phone. I'm just really glad that you've decided to take over your mom's restaurant and not let it, not let it close down. It's a great restaurant. I'd encourage anyone to go out there. Yeah. Um, it's unique, <laughs> great flavor. And I think you're going to have some maybe new wines we talked yeah, about so, we with this liquor license. We do. New wines and new craft beer. Oh, love it. I love it. So, <laughs> so thank everyone, you. Everyone should come and join Everyone should come and try it. <laughs> With that, a motion to approve. Second. Moved and seconded to approve item 18. There are no lights. Roll call. Jerem? Yes. Milton? Yes. Paul? Thompson? Yes. Festerson? Yes. Granat? Yes. Mr. President? Yes. 18 is adopted 7 0. Item number 19. Tobacco Hut, 6510 South 84th Street. Package liquor license, no application, no location. Public hearing on agenda item number 19 is today. Proponents, please. Hi, for a crack off on behalf of the uh, Albro Holdings, 10409 High Street. <coughs> here to, uh, to answer any questions you might have. Thank you. Are there any other proponents who wish to be heard? Seeing none, are there any opponents who wish to be heard? Seeing none, public hearing is closed. Second, roll call. Jerem? Yes. Milton? Yes. Pauls? Yes. Thompson? Yes. Festerson? Yes. Granat? Yes. Mr. President? Yes. 19 is adopted 7 0. Item number 20. Jack's Discount ta Tobacco and Liquor, 721 North 120th Street. Package liquor license, no application, old location. Public hearing on agenda item number 20 is today. Proponents, please. Hi again, uh, Farouk Rakimov um, on behalf of the Jack Discount Tobacco and Liquor, 721 North 120th Street. Thank you. Are there any other proponents who wish to be heard? Seeing none, are there any opponents who wish to be heard? Seeing none, public hearing is closed. Moved and seconded to approve item 20. No lights. Roll call. Jerem? Yes. Milton? Yes. Paul? Yes. Thompson? Yes. Festerson? Yes. Garnett? Yes. Mr. President? Yes. 20 is adopted 7 to 0. Item number 21. Agave Azteca, 681 8685 North 132nd Street. Request permission for an addition to the present Class I liquor license on outdoor area approximately 34 by 24 to the north. Public hearing on agenda item number 21 is today. Proponents, please. Seeing none, are there any opponents? Seeing none, public hearing is closed. I'm going to go ahead and move to approve this. Only because I know this restaurant well. I'm not sure why they're not here, but I actually do. F yeah. Yes, there you are. Come on. Come on down. <laughs> are you a proponent? Yes. Yes. <laughs> okay. It would be good if you are. Go ahead. Right. Go ahead. Your name and address, please. All right. My name is Gerson Franco, and my address is 12304 Stonegate Drive. Uh, as a business, it would be 681 North, 132nd Street. And, uh, well, yeah, it's sim pretty simple, I guess. Sorry that I'm running late. Um, it's just an addition to the patio. That's all we want. Okay. Thank you. Are, are there any other points? Well, we've already gone through that, so Ms. Melton. Well, I, I think that, and I think earlier I said we should be okay with people running a little late, uh, you know, <laughs> if you <laughs> waited for any bikers or, or motorcyclists, so I think As long we have as you didn't hit any motorcycles, yeah, it's okay. We're, we're going to have to forgive that delay. Uh, you know, I was going to move to approve it only because I, you've been a welcome addition um, to that Hy-Vee, Linden Market area. Your food is absolutely fabulous. Uh, my kids love it. Um, and so we frequent your restaurant. Glad to see we can come and we'll be able to sit outside, uh, enjoy the nice weather. Maybe not tonight, but um, we'll have some nice weather again this fall. And next year for sure. Yes. 
So, so we'll, I'll move to approve that. Thank you very much. Second. Moved and seconded to approve item 21. There are no lights. Roll call. Jerem? Yes. Milton? Yes. Pauls? Yes. Thompson? Yes. Festerson? Yes. Grenette? Yes. Mr. President? Yes. 21 is adopted 7 to 0. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> item number 22, Husker Food Store, 4201 South 24th Street. Request permission for an addition to the present package liquor license of an area approximately 9 by 40 to the south. Public hearing on agenda item number 22 is today. Proponents, please. Yes. Um, Sunil Mohantas, uh, 4201 South 24th Street. Uh, my name is Yogesh Panchal, and I'm coming from 24th Street. Um, and you're just here to we're, answer any we're questions? We're just uh, adding another 1,000 square feet to our building, um, mainly for our kitchen and a money center. Um, so our uh, back, back storage has moved to this new, we want to move to this new area. Okay. So that's our intention. Okay. <coughs> okay. Uh, are there any other proponents who wish to be heard? This is item 22. Any other proponents? Seeing none, are there any opponents? Seeing none, public hearing is closed. Mr. Garnett. Thank you, Mr. President. We, we've been through several things on this yes, 9 sir. by 40 edition, haven't right. we? Right, yeah. Okay. It's been a year. Uh, it's, <laughs> been, it's been quite an ordeal, right. uh, hopefully, that uh, we can get through. Did you get that one part opened already? Yes, yes, it's already okay. We have Thank you for doing talked that. about last yeah. with uh, the planning department. Right. Okay. Um, <clears throat> this addition includes two drive-up windows. Is the alcohol going out those windows? No. No. Because there was, I didn't see in your application where it says that they won't. No, that is just for the food only. The first yeah. one is for the money service. For, first one's for the money. And the second, second one's one is for the, for the food. food. There's no If they get thirsty, you're, they have to come inside to purchase your package. Correct. Is that correct? Correct. Uh, all right. First complaint. You know what's going to happen, right? <laughs> I know. Okay. No, so we are not we serving any liquor or, or beer through there. Your, I know that the majority of your staff, your current staff, has been through the training. Yes. Okay. The staff that's going to work those other two new windows, they need to be aware sure, of what they can and cannot do. Right. My office that. is next to that, so I will be monitoring that. Right. Cautiously approve item 22. Second. Thank you. It's been moved and seconded to cautiously approve item number 22. There are no further lights. Roll call. Jerem? Cautiously, yes. Melton? Yes. Pauls? Yes. Thompson? Yes. Festerson? Yes. Grenat? Yes. Mr. President? Yes. 22 is approved 7 to 0. Thank you. Thank you. Item 23. The noodles at 203 South 72nd Street, uh, 124 14 L Street, and 131 10 West Dodge Road. Request permission to appoint Russell Scott manager. Public hearing on agenda item number 23 is today. Performance, please. Good afternoon. I'm Russell Scott with uh, Nebraska Dining Noodles Incorporated, or Noodles uh, uh, and Company. Um, <coughs> I'm here to answer any questions that you might have. Thank you. Are there any other proponents who wish to be heard? Seeing none, are there any opponents who wish to be heard? Seeing none, public hearing is closed. Second. Moved and seconded to approve item 23. No lights. Roll call. Jerem? Yes. Milton? Yes. Paul? Yes. Thompson? Yes. Festerson? Yes. Gurnett? Yes. Mr. President? Yes. 23 is approved. 7 to 0. Thank you. Have a good afternoon. Thank you. Item number 24, Saints Pub and Patio, Midtown Crossing at 120 South 31st Avenue and Saints Pub Roanoke, 4915 North 120th Street. Request permission to appoint Brittany J. Saka, manager. Public hearing on agenda item number 24 is today. Proponents, please. Uh, Mr. President, members, Mike Kelly, 7134 Pacific, appearing here with uh, Brittany Socha, who is, who is the applicant for manager. We're just here for any questions you might have. Thank you. Are there any other proponents who wish to be heard? Seeing none, are there any opponents who wish to be heard? Seeing none, public hearing is closed. Moved and seconded to approve item 24. No lights. Roll call. Jerem? Yes. Milton? Yes. Pauls? 
Yes. Thompson? Yes. Festerson? Yes. Grenat? Yes. Mr. President? Yes. Chairman passes a second time. Uh, 24 is approved, 601 passing. Item number 25, resolution that Big Red is granted approval to operate a satellite keno location at the Therapy Bar and Grill, 5059 South 108th Street. Public hearing on agenda item number 25 is today. Proponents, please. Yes, Mr. President, members of the council, my name is Katrina Coffey. I'm Vice President of Marketing for Big Red Keno. We're located at 11248 John Galt Boulevard. I have with me today the two owners of the Therapy Bar, and we'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. Thank you. Are there any other proponents who wish to be heard? Seeing none, are there any opponents who wish to be heard? Seeing none, public hearing is closed. Uh, Mr. Pauls. Thank you, Mr. President. <laughs> Could I have one of the owners come forth? Uh, Mr. Pauls. Yes. Last night, uh, I was at therapy to get some therapy. <laughs> yes. I appreciate it. It's very good. Your food looked excellent. Uh, so now, when are you going to be able to do the lottery? When, does, when do you officially become? If we pass it today, when are you going to start? That, that'll be me. <laughs> um, Katrina Coffey. Um, we will wait to get the license from the state. Generally, it takes about two weeks or so, uh, and then uh, we'll be able to open up. They had the TVs installed this morning. They started training. Um, they're going to finish up training tomorrow, and so we'll just need to wait from the state for the license. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Mr. Dr. Thompson. Uh, Mr. Pauls, may I assume that 100% of your therapy last night was liquid? <laughs> <laughs> Interesting therapy. <laughs> That's it. I kind of like that therapy myself. But anyway, okay. Uh, there are no further lights. Uh, is there a motion? Yes. Moved and seconded to approve item 25. No further lights. Roll call. Jerem? Yes. Melton? Yes. Pauls? Yes. Thompson? Yes. Festerson? Yes. Garnett? Yes. Mr. President? Yes. 25 is adopted 7 0. Thank you. Thank you. Consent agenda. Any member of city council may cause an item placed on the consent agenda to be removed. Items removed consent agenda shall be taken up by city council meeting following the consent agenda in the order in which they were removed unless otherwise provided by city council rules of order. The public hearings on agenda items numbers 26 through 29 were held on August 30th, 2016. Moved and seconded to approve. No lights. Roll call. Jerem, yes. Milton, yes. Paul, yes. Thompson, yes. Pesterson, yes. Grenat. Yes. Mr. President. Yes. 26 through 29 are passed. 7 to 0. We're removing item number 32 from the resolution consent agenda. Thank you. The public hearing on agenda items numbers 30 through 31, uh, 33 through 54 are today. If you wish to address the city council regarding these items, please come to the microphone. Indicate the agenda item number you wish to address. Identify yourself by your name, address, who you represent, and if you are a proponent or an opponent. Seeing none, the public hearing is closed. Moved, approval. Moved and seconded to approve items 30, 31, 33 through 54. No lights. Roll call. Jerem? Yes. Milton? Yes. Paul? Yes. Thompson? Yes. Festerson? Yes. Grenat? Yes. Mr. President? Yes. 30 through 31, 33 through 54 are adopted 7 to 0. Now, item number 32, resolution that change order number 5 with the Western Engineering Company for the resurfacing of Loveland Drive from 84th to 85th Avenue uh, is hereby approved. Public hearing, well, yeah, the public hearing on agenda item number 32 is today. Proponents, please. Oh, and we have an amendment of the whole. Okay. Public, uh, is there an amendment of the whole? Yeah. Okay. Public hearing on agenda item number 32 is today. Proponents, please. Seeing none, are there any opponents? Seeing none, public hearing is closed. Oh. Motion to approve the amendment. There's been a second roll call. Jerem? Yes. Milton? Yes. Paul? Yes. Thompson? Yes. Festerson? Yes. Garnett? Yes. Mr. President? Yes. Amendment of the whole. Well, th this is an amendment of the whole, so you don't have to do anything. Yeah. Amendment of the whole for 32 is adopted 7 to 0. Thank you. Ordinance on final reading, item 55, ordinance vacating a portion of the east-west alley, south uh, 35th Street between Marcy and Mason Streets. A is an amendment. B is minimum of the whole. B is Planning Board and Planning Department recommend. Public hearing on agenda item number 55 was held on uh, August 30th, uh, 2016. Second. The moved and seconded to, to move the amendment of the whole. Uh, no further lights. Roll call. Jerem, yes. Milton, yes. Pauls, 
Yes. Thompson? Yes. Festerson? Yes. Garnett? Yes. Mr. President? Yes. 55s, amendment of the whole is passed 7 to 0. Item 56, ordinance vacating a portion of the north south alley, Mason Street, between South 33rd Street and Turner Boulevard. A is an amendment of the whole, B is planning board and planning department recommend approval. Public hearing on agenda item number 56 was held on uh, August 30th, 2016. Moved and seconded for the amendment of the whole. No further lights. Roll call. Jerem, yes. Milton, yes. Pauls, yes. Thompson, yes. Festerson, yes. Garnett. Yes. Mr. President. Yes. Uh, 56. The amendment of the whole is passed 7 to 0. Item number 57. Ordinance vacating a portion of the north south alley, Mason Street between South 33rd Street and Turner Boulevard. A is an amendment of the whole. B is a Planning Board and Planning Department recommend approval. Public hearing on agenda item number 57 is today. Was held. I'm sorry. Was held on August 30th, 2016. Moved and seconded uh, on the, for the amendment of the whole. No lights. Roll call. Jerem, yes. Milton, yes. Pauls, Thompson, yes. Festerson, yes. Garnett. Yes. Mr. President. Yes. 57 is the amendment of the whole. Is passed 7 to 0. Ordinance on final reading, item 58, ordinance to amend Omaha Municipal Code, chapter 19, to provide for the applicability of the restaurant occupation tax to certain food vendors to clarify the enforcement of the restaurant occupation tax. Public hearing, well, the public hearing on agenda item 58, 58 was held on uh, July 19th, 2016. Is there a, uh, Mr. Jaron. Yes, Mr. Curtis, finance director. Are you there? Steve Curtis, city finance. I have a couple questions. Um, picking up when we last left off, on this ordinance, there was a sentiment, at least that I expressed and the, I made a motion to lay it over today to allow the process of getting the regulation side of um, the food truck um, businesses further along and with reasonable certainty is that it would be introduced and we're told uh, that it will be the first reading on that ordinance will be next um, Tuesday. And while there's always opportunities for the work product that's produced to be amended in various forms, or at least proposed to be amended in various forms, uh, as it pertains to today's ordinance, we're simply uh, asked to, um, as proposed, amend the restaurant tax to include food trucks, right? That's correct. And as I understand, there's been some budget assumptions that were made when this was discussed and it is predicted that if the food trucks are brought into the <coughs> restaurant tax it'll produce uh, approximately three hundred thousand dollars in additional revenue per year is that correct that's correct now um, with regard to the city's budgetary status for 2016 are we currently in a surplus situation? Yes. And is the surplus uh, plus or minus seven million? Uh, it's approximately seven million at the moment, yes. And last year, the city also had a surplus. Is that true? That's correct. And what was last year's surplus? Uh, approximately 12 million. And in the year before that, did we have a surplus? Yes, we did. Okay. So if there were an amendment proposed to today's uh, amendment to reduce the restaurant tax by 0.25, from 2.5 to 2.25, or 25, so from 2.5 to 2.25, um, what would the corresponding reduction in net revenue be from the current estimated 30 million factoring in the additional dollars that this would bring in? Well, this would bring in about 300,000, so we'd be at about 30.3, .3, and then a quarter point move down would be about $3 million. Okay. So it would be about 27.3. Yes. Okay. Well, I would make that motion to amend this proposal. Hope I get a second. 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 Uh, Ms. Mel. 
Yeah, and I just I just have a question on on this because it's the first that I heard that we were going to have this amendment. But Mr. Um, Curtis, currently your budget you would need to then amend your budget for next year by 3.3 million. Is that right? I, that may be a legal question. I'm not sure this deep Curtis City Finance. I'm not sure if we can amend. We're not really amending the budget. We're amending a revenue source uh, computation. So uh, even though we'd show now a three million dollar, we'd predict a three million dollar shortfall in this. I don't know that we have to redo the budget. But you'd have a shortfall that you weren't anticipating before today. That would be correct. Okay. Well, Mr. Kratz, could you weigh in on that? Paul Kratz. Excuse me, Paul Kratz, City Attorney. Uh, Mr. Curtis is right. Uh, we would not need to amend the budget. The budget's already been passed and set, and we cannot make changes after it's been um, established and passed by the council. So it would essentially create a shortfall in next year's budget that the city would have to make up somewhere along the line. And uh, of course, I'm all uh, you know. I'm in support of reducing this tax as much as as we can. Um, if possible, but I think it, it would be something that I'd want to give the mayor the chance to look at since she's currently out of town um, before we had a vote on that. So, although I like um, I like the thought, I would like to give the mayor the opportunity to weigh on, in on this. Mr. Curtis, did you have the opportunity to to look at this to make a determination of where we would cut the budget in order to deal with the shortfall? Uh, no, that was just introduced today. So have you had any discussions with the mayor in re regards to this amendment? No. Okay. So I guess doing something of that magnitude, I would like to at least get the mayor's input on it. So uh, before we voted on something like that, which I think is, is great, I'd like to get the mayor's input and uh, make a motion to lay it over. Uh, and I guess would it be? Motion. Yeah. I just make a substitute motion to lay it over for two, two weeks. I guess it would be it would be the same time that we'd be voting on the food truck regulation itself. No. Two weeks would be the public hearing. I'm sorry. It would be the public hearing. No, it would be the public hearing. It wouldn't be the vote. The vote would be the week after. Oh, yeah, the public hearing. Yeah, it would be the two weeks would be the public hearing. So I think I would be three and maybe just put it on the same day. Three weeks. Moved and seconded to lay over for three weeks. All right. Um, Dr. Thompson. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, <coughs> Curtis, if, are we still there? Steve Curtis, City Finance, yes. What rate would it be if it was an equal swap, the amount that we're taking in, the 300000 and if that was the swap, uh, what, what, at what rate would that be? Two point what? You'd be basically reducing the total tax at 2.5 by 1%. So if you took 2.5 times 1%, it'd be 2.475. Okay. Um, I'd like to go on record as saying that that particular reduction I would support. I would support uh, the 2.475, but in my mind, the 2.25 is a little too drastic and it would cause problems, but I would be for uh, reducing it the amount that the new ordinance would bring in. So I'm, I'm open, I'm not committing to it, but I'm open to discussing that as a reduction. I'd just like to put that on the record. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Jerome. Yeah, the thought behind this was I thought I was actually um, being conservative on the, the thought process and the reduction because you know, we've had great fanfare about the budget surpluses that we've been running around here, meaning the city has been, in recent years, taking in millions of dollars in revenue from taxes uh, more than what is needed to run the city government. Seven million this year, 12 million last year, millions in the year before. So the, the hope would be that if this gets laid over, that there would be support for reducing this if, in fact, as we're being told, we're taking in millions more than we need. So why not put the money back in the hands of the taxpayers and maybe they'll, you know, put it to good use for additional needs in the households? Okay. Um, 
Mr. Grenett. Thanks, Mr. President. Uh, Mr. Curtis, uh, and every time that there is a surplus, uh, at least as long as I've been here, it goes to the next year's budget. Is that correct? Two years. It technically rolls out two years. Two years? Yes. Okay. And, and for what it's worth, the uh, surplus is this year and last year primarily health care. Right. So we don't, you just don't have a, a $7 million bucket of money sitting somewhere that uh, we can uh, happily dip into and go, th th take that two years out, made applicable, to 17 and 18 or 18 and 19, uh, is that about right? Uh, if I follow what you said, yeah, I think that is correct. There is nothing other than the surplus moving forward. Okay. I think we ought to vote this thing up or down today. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Mr. Paul. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. You know, we have a new idea that, and I think it's sort of germinating right now. Uh, I do agree with uh, Councilwoman Melton about the mayor probably ought to have some input in this, but I also commend uh, Councilman uh, Jerem for at least trying to make something, because I thought our goal was eventually is to help reduce that, and this may be one way of doing it. I don't know. I don't have all those facts. People are throwing numbers at me, and I used to like to let sit over there and look at them for a little bit. If I vote today, I, I'll tell you right now, I will, you will be a no vote for me on not this particular amendment, but on the original. On the original yes. amendment, yes. Um, okay, there are no further lights. It's been, there was a substitute motion to lay over for three weeks, I think it is, right? Correct. Uh, substitute motion to lay over for three weeks. There are no further lights. Roll call. Jerem? No. Melton? Yes. Paul? Yes. Thompson? Yes. Festerson? No. Grant? No. Mr. President? No. Uh, the substitute motion fails on a three to four vote. Move the Back approval. to the original amendment. Do, 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 you'd have to do a substitute motion to move approval. Um, move the approval to to uh, decrease it to yeah. two point no. four seven. You have, an, you have We have an amendment on the floor that decreases the two point five to two point two five in line twenty nine, page four. So, so you still have to have a substitute motion. Would that Can you substitute correct? that for a different figure? Substitute. If he accepts it, meaning the original mover. Okay, you were the original motion. The, the substitute motion would be to go down to 2.475 as a decrease. For the food truck only, right? For the, for the overall. For the tax. overall tax. Overall tax. Okay. Mr. Jerome. I guess my thought would be is to ask the clerk from a parliamentary procedure standpoint if I were to decline the offer to amend and this amendment were to fail, would there be anything to prevent another amendment offered to reduce it to another number, whether that be 2.475 or some other figure? Uh, Buster Brown, City Clerk. No, there would be, if this amendment fails, then anyone else, any other council member could introduce an additional amendment at that time. Okay, I guess my, my preference would be that we vote on this and then see where it goes and then um, take that up if it were to fail. So it would be to vote on the original motion? My amendment. Your, your amendment. Okay, which would be 2.25. 2.25. It's from 2.5 to 2.25. Okay. Uh, it's been moved and seconded. Uh, Ms. Melton. Well, I just think, we, I just have a few more questions in regards to something like this, and because I'm not sure why this wasn't brought up when we just had the budget, um, so that potentially the mayor, department heads, and this council could have had some input into, you know, how we reduce it, or what do we reduce, or where do we put the money. Um, and so I wish there would have been just a little more discussion on this, even at, oh, I don't know, pre-council this morning, maybe at 10.30, uh, just so that there could be. So I think, 
you know, I, I understand that, that, that this is more of a, a, a political move, but again, if we were going to decrease taxes, I think, I, I know that the mayor has um, even talked about it. We've had many discussions about doing it, and she had a property tax reduction this year that she chose to do over a, a restaurant tax reduction, which I know was tough for her. And I think what she did was she made a decision based on what was um, best for the city and not a political decision. And I think today this is without with doing something like this while knowing she's out of town without even without even giving her the opportunity to make a phone call or talk to anybody about this um, I think is a little disingenuous um, but with that I am confident that um, the mayor wanted this wants to wants to reduce taxes and is a proponent of reducing taxes um, so I, I just think it was a little not even giving her any kind of heads up or any kind of discussion. Um, a little disingenuous. Um, is that all? You're, are you done with your comments? I am. Okay. All right. Uh, Dr. Thompson. Yes, I've been on this council long enough to know a lot about um, political moves and political theater, and I'm, I'm no... Uh, you know, a uh, naive person or, or a neophyte <coughs> to that particular part of the business. And I also know where this is going. And because I know where it's going, that's why I offer the 2.475. Now, this morning in pre-council, when this first came up, uh, Steve, you had, you, I believe, Steve Curtis, I believe you threw out at least you qualified before we left that it would be 2.475, is that correct? Uh, yeah, we did that this afternoon, but yeah, it would be 2.475 if you took out the 300,000 and adjusted the rate. But you, you gave us that figure at our 1030 pre-council, right? I, I think I did guess that it would be somewhere in that range, yes. Okay, so the reason why I didn't fight at that particular time, I didn't buck against it, was because philosophically, it's easy to say if we take in a new tax that that new tax sh shouldn't be a surplus above and beyond what we're used to. So an even trade is something that I, I believe in. And I believe that that, even though the mayor would want to have input on that also, I believe that could be justified a little easier. And I also believe that, um, like Councilman um, Melton said, that the mayor should have some say, but if she's not going to have say, then at least let's not drastically change what we've already voted up. We've already voted, voted up the, the budget, and this way we can justify it more easily by saying we're just trading uh, one tax for another, and, and it stays pretty much the same. So I think that if we're going to do anything dramatic today, that that's the only thing we do. However, 2.25 would be a, a dramatic a change, and it reminds me of a move that was made uh, back during the Dobb era when the, when the mayor was gone and certain things happened when the council uh, was here alone without the mayor. And, and that didn't go over very well. Historically, that, did, that move didn't go over. And I think this same one here would have that same kind of effect, and it would uh, draw uh, too much of a... Uh, lines in the sand between the two floors, second and third floor. So again, I ask my colleagues that if you're going to not go with a, a layover, that we don't do the 2.25, because that's where we're headed, um, that we be a little more conservative and go with the 2.475, giving the mayor a little bit more to that she can swallow as opposed to uh, making this kind of a, a stick em up heist. So that's just my opinion, and my opinion is food for the circular file, but I do want to get it on, on, on record that uh, we still have to have decorum between the two floors. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Jerem. Yes, Mr. Clerk, did you publish an announcement as to the period of time in which the mayor would be out of the city? We don't, uh, Buster Brown City Clerk, we don't publish anything. Well, you, you we are, we, I am notified. When does the mayor get back? I believe it's next Tuesday. Tuesday. Tuesday today. So what would be the period of time if this amendment were passed and the underlying proposal passed that the mayor would have to consider veto? 
it's presented documents are presented this Thursday when she's out of town so normally it's presented to the acting mayor uh, if the mayor requests that uh, the acting mayor hold a document for her in the past that has been done well the acting mayor would be the council president correct so the council president could hold this that's correct if he, he, if he so chose for what period of time uh, uh, they would have from till if we present this Thursday they have a week she, she would have a week till next Thursday so Mr. Gray, would this be the type of thing, if it were to pass, that you would be willing to hold for the mayor? Because if you weren't, then I might see the, the courtesy of the layover to allow the mayor to return. But if you were, and the mayor would be allowed her opportunity to um, consider this, then... This would be something that I would hold for the mayor. Well, I would not want to make a decision on that. I guess if there were a substitute layover motion for, for one week, that would then give the mayor her full opportunity rather than have this issue as to whether she has, when her time comes, comes back, a full week or a number of days less than that. So if there's a substitute motion to layover for one week, I, I might be inclined to support that. Uh, Mr. Gannett. Thank you, Mr. President. I, we had a motion, we had a substitute, we've had a substitute, and there's a potential of, a, of another substitute. Mr. Clerk, item 58 is to provide the applicability of mobile food vendors underneath the restaurant occupation tax. Is that correct? That's what... Uh, Buster Brown City Clerk, that is correct. Is that correct? Yes, it is, sir. Okay. Right. I'll say it again. I take item 58 in its original form and we either we vote it up or we vote it down. And one or the other. Well, I thank would, you. I would um, Who, thank you. Did you second my? Yes, I seconded it. Ms. Melton, she well, she'd be next. Well, I was I was going to I was going to make a motion for at least a one week layover, like Councilman Durham has said, just so that the mayor doesn't have 48 hours from the time she gets back from vacation to put her in that kind of in that kind of um, predicament or something that we you know, she does work really hard taking a few days off. Uh, I don't think is a bad thing, and I'd like to give her a little bit of time. To actually review this, look at the numbers, have time to review it with Mr. Curtis. And so it, if they're going to have a vote up or down or a, at least a one-week layover, I would make a move for a one-week layover. However, I didn't mean to jump in front of Councilman Grenant's motion that he just made. I just had my request to speak to make that motion. No, he didn't make a motion. He couldn't make a motion. There's he a, make a motion. There's a motion on the floor. I just made a reminder. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. I... I'm good with yours, uh, Councilman Grenant, if you would like to go with 58. Otherwise, I would make a motion to lay over one week. Substitute, substitute motion. Substitute. Right. To lay substitute, over one substitute yeah. motion with, at this point. To lay over one week? Yeah. One okay. week. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Um, so moved and seconded. Substitute motion to lay over one week has been moved and seconded. Mr. Pauls. Thank you. You know, I can remember back in the day, sometimes the coach would substitute me about 10 times in a basketball game. And the purpose of that was to have me go to the bench, collect my thoughts, and then get ready to go out and play. And this coach was a winning coach. So I think your ideas is causing us to think, go back to the bench for a week and come back, you know. But I can assure you, I know our mayor's on vacation, but our mayor is working right now, guys. You know what I mean? She, she, she knows what's happening. This is not uh, because she's that type of person. We know that. She's a hardworking person. So I say let's get your idea accomplished through your motion. Am I, it makes, I, am I, I making understand. sense? Yeah, I understand what you're saying. Okay. okay. There's a substitute motion to lay over one week. Uh, there's no further lights. Roll call. Jerem? Yes. Melton? Yes. Paul? Yes. Thompson? 
Uh, I'll give you an I need liquid therapy, yes. <laughs> Festerson? Yes. Gurnett? Yes. Mr. President? Yes. Uh, 58 is laid over one week, 7 to 0. <coughs> Item number 59, ordinance approving the contract with Allegheny Answering Services uh, for Telephone Answering Service Project A is an amendment requested by Public Works. Public hearing on agenda item number 59 is today for opponents, please. Seeing none, are there any opponents? Seeing none, public hearing is closed. Is there a motion? Motion on the amendment. Motion to approve the amendment. Second. Moved and seconded to approve the amendment. Um, no lights, roll call. Jerem? Yes. Milton? Yes. Pauls? Yes. Thompson? Yes. Festerson? Yes. Garnett? Yes. Mr. President? Yes. As amended? As amended? As amended. Is there a second? Second. Roll call. Jerem? Yes. Milton? Yes. Pauls? Yes. Thompson? Yes. Festerson? Yes. Garnett? Yes. Mr. President? Yes. 59 is passed as amended 7 to 0. Resolutions, item number 60, resolution at the professional service agreement with AGA Consulting, professional services associated with the parking facility lighting and electrical needs study project is hereby approved. Public well, hearing on agenda item number 50 is, was held on 8, on 8 30, 2016. Uh, uh, Ms. Melt. And I'll second. Uh, Councilman Jerem, I think, just made the motion. I will second that, but I wanted to just comment because from last week to this week, we did meet with uh, Public Works, and I just wanted to actually make the, our constituents um, aware of, of the need for this consulting contract. What we discovered was there is not an electrical uh, engineer on staff with the city um, that has the experience in doing uh, what we need them to do for this kind of study. For it wasn't just to replace. Um, I think it. I, I think we got some emails just to replace the light bulbs, but it actually took um, some engineering studies, uh, studying that is going to need to be done on these parking garages. Uh, moreover, this is coming out of the parking revenue fund, so it's not coming out of taxpayer fund. Is that correct, Mr. Curtis? That's correct. Uh, therefore, uh, these aren't. This isn't necessarily taxpayer dollars. These are funds that we raise because we charge a fee for people to park in the public garages, right? Yeah, this is Steve Curtis, City Finance. That's correct. And now, and this consulting contract is going to evaluate the needs um, for better lighting and for improved safety in those garages. Is that right? I, I would probably defer to Mr. Stubbe for that. Bob Stubbe, Public Works. I'd like to have Ken Smith come up and kind of give a, a detailed uh, discussion with regard to exactly what this is and, and which I think is very important. So I'll turn it over to Ken. Ken Smith, Public Works. Uh, thank you, Mr. Yeah. Smith. If you want to give a very, just a, a brief um, summary of why this consulting contract is, is needed sure. um, and, and why it actually saves taxpayer money because we aren't going to hire a full-time sure. uh, electrical engineer. Sure. AGA Consulting is a garage consulting firm, and under them is ETI, which is a sub-consultant, is electrical engineer. Uh, why those two work together is because AGA, when you're putting up new lights, you don't want to just drill into a garage that has tenants and stuff going through. So we're going to have a structural engineer say, this is where that light needs to go. And the electrical engineer has evaluated not only the lights, but also the entire electrical systems. We have uh, backup battery systems, uh, generators and such that are not working properly right now. So we want to evaluate those. And then the additional lighting will bring security and safety to our garages. OK. Uh, and, and again, this amount, um, do you feel that was a reasonable amount to pay for this kind of service? Yes. This will set forth uh, a project that we can kind of hang our hat on and move ahead with n actual numbers versus kind of guessing what, we're, what we need to do down the road. OK. Thank you very much. I appreciate Welcome. you coming today. And so the, the reason that I'm approving and I think the other council, the other council members on the Public Works Committee is that these types of consulting contracts actually save us money so that we don't have to hire full-time employees with this kind of experience. So um, thank you, and I did second that. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Thompson. Yeah, so Mr. Smith, yes. if you don't mind, um, are you going to be able to hang around until after because I need to speak with you? I can. Is that okay? Yes. Thank you. Mr. Pauls. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, could the chair of the uh, Public Works Committee uh, tell me when this was discussed? Yeah. 
the after last week's meeting we had a special public works committee meeting on thursday i believe or tuesday thursday yeah tuesday oh yes we had a tuesday when we were we were it would have been off and had a non council day so last week to a week ago today in fact i think you had a tuesday afternoon if i can recall correct and this is sort of my sermon now we're spending a lot of time right now discussing this if that meeting had been open this topic and the reporter would have been there all this information would have been even open to the public before today I'm just trying to say some of our meetings need to be open our three committee uh, or th when three of uh, the council said it ought to be open sometimes uh, they would come they would uh, and I'm talking about the media some of these issues would be resolved before they get to this point thank you thank you um, mr. Jim well the good news about the public works committee is we're a, we're already a hybrid committee we're open to the public um, more than and more accessible than other committees particularly when we're considering the street vacations or as we've started our weekly after pre-council meetings people are welcome to stick around as we go through the contracts so hopefully that can yeah. could be an example for other committees um this has been moved and seconded to uh, to approve this uh, let, let me just say that uh, being the chairman of the public safety committee some some of the work that's done in there and some of the things that are said in there i would be I would have issues trying to. Um, I would be. I would have issues uh, supporting a, a, an open me, open uh, open session for the public works committee. I mean public safety committee. Uh, it's been moved and seconded to approve. No further lights. Roll call. Jerem. Yes. Milton. Yes. Pauls. Yes. Thompson. Yes. Festerson. Yes. Kernat. Yes. Mr. President. Yes. Sixty is adopted. Seven to zero. Sixty one is resolution of professional services agreement with D W. Uh, a study for the city of Omaha snowplow snow plan is hereby approved a is communications for public works to request and withdrawal of this uh, agreement Most allowed. moved and seconded to allow withdrawal of number 61 item number 61 there are no lights roll call Jerem yes. Milton yes. Pauls yes Thompson yes Festerson yes Grant yes Mr. President yes 61 is withdrawn 7 to 0 Pursuant to City Council Rule 7F, Agenda Item Number 62, should we leave over three weeks for publication of public hearing. Pursuant to City Council Rule 70, the public hearing on Agenda Items Number 63 through 64 should be held on third reading. Ordinance on second reading, Item 65, Ordinance to amend Section 23-177 by changing the title of the employment classification on a city engineer to assistant director of transportation services and to change the title of employment classification known as environmental services manager to assistant director environmental services public hearing on agenda item number 65 is today proponents please jim begley city human resources here to answer questions thank you are there any other proponents who wish to be heard seeing none are there any opponents who wish to be heard seeing none, public hearing is closed mr paul uh, thank you mr president i do have a couple questions um, I'm basically seeking <clears throat> some clarification and so the public would understand why we are making some of these changes, the purpose behind them, and I think through your discussion that would be brought uh, or made a little clearer. I see we have a city engineer and an environmental service manager. They are being, uh, their position is being changed to assistant director. But I also looked at their uh, job descriptions, is what I call them. I don't see significant changes in those job descriptions. So I'm just curious why we moved uh, these two titles, and I'm calling bas basically a move of titles. It seems like the responsibilities are remaining the same. And I see on their pay salary, they, they were at a 29 AEC, which basically is a base of 96,000 to 116. They're being moved to th uh, 32 AEC, which a base of 108 to 129. I'm just curious uh, by, like I say, I didn't see much of a change in their job description. I do see the change in their titles, which uh, the salaries correspondingly are going up. I was just curious about that. Sure, uh, Jim Begley, City Human Resources. Um, I'd be glad to defer to Mr. Stubbe. 
Bob Stubbe, Public Works. Um, these are both positions that are essentially direct reports uh, to the Public Works Director and myself. And so uh, the intent was is that um, uh, over the years, the, the individual titles have morphed a little bit. Uh, the intent on my part was to essentially make both of those assistant directors so there'd be some understanding and consistency between the two. So you have on the one side um, a city engineer which has responsibility for <coughs> transportation services. On the other side you have the um, uh, environmental services manager that is responsible for environmental services and so my intent was is to essentially make those titles uh, the same. Um, there is not a lot of change with regard to the class specifications because uh, one of the things that's within the class specifications is that in the absence of the Public Works Director, uh, one of these individuals can act uh, in that role uh, during that absence. Right. I, I did see where the uh, previous revision dates were. One was in the year 2013, the other was the year 2005. But again, like I say, I've not seen what I call a really significant change in their job description. But here's the thing, and I think the, the public ought to know this, uh, this uh, facilitates, facilitates the process of filling the vacancy that currently exists in the new, newly created position of assistant director uh, of the environmental service. Are we missing somebody? Is that, am I interpreting that right? Uh, we do currently have a position that is has been vacant since April of this year, which is the environmental services manager. And if if you recall, also that there's been some uh, changes with regard to the pay relative to the civil engineer one through the civil engineer four, and so part of that reason is is because of the fact that we had difficulty being able to get individuals to actually post for those positions and we've also had problems in the past where people have been city employees in those positions <coughs> and have moved on to other jobs because of the fact that the the pay wasn't able to keep up. Uh, part of the change with regard to what's on the agenda today is also to change that pay structure because of the potential compression that now exists between the CE4 position and the assistant director position. And Mr. Poles, as a rule of thumb, um, with regard to add what, to what Mr. Stubbe said, um, Human Resources tries to keep a 10% difference between levels to avoid that pay compression issue. Right. I, I'm familiar with that in my, in my past experiences. But the part I'm trying to get, you're telling me uh, to some degree you need to increase the salaries because you're having a hard time filling some of these positions. Would that be true? Bob Stubbe, Public Works, that is correct, especially, again, with the CE1 through the CE4 position, is that not only are we having difficulty getting individuals that even want to put in for a position, but we are also have had problems in the past by individuals that have worked for the city for a few years and have decided to move on. So, this so it's retention and hiring. So this should dispel some of the ideas out there that uh, a government job is just a piece of cake because if you can't fill the positions, there must be a reason. You're saying basically to some degree it's salary. Uh, Bob Stubbe, Public Works. Yes, based on two surveys that were done. One survey was done by uh, ACEC and then also another survey was done by the Human Resources Department and both of those surveys uh, essentially uh, validated the concerns that we had which led again to the increases that were um, were done with the CE1 through the CE4 position. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate it. Okay. I mean, um, or is, is this just uh, yeah, is this, this, no this is up here? Okay. Uh, there are no further lights. Uh, next item. Item 66, Ordinance to amend Section 23177 by adding the employment classification entitled Labor Relations Director, Assistant Human Resources Director. Public hearing agenda item number 66 is today. Proponents, please. Jim Begley, City Human Resources, here to answer questions. Thank you. Are there any other proponents who wish to be heard? Seeing none, are there any opponents who wish to be heard? Seeing none, public hearing is closed. Next item. Item 67, ordinance to amend section 23177 uh, by adding the employment classification entitled Deputy City Attorney, City Lobbyist. Public hearing agenda item number 67 is today. Proponents, please. Jim Begley, City Human Resources, here to answer any questions. 
Thank you. Public hearing. Uh, uh, any other proponents who wish to be heard? Seeing none, are there any other opponents who wish to be heard? Seeing none, public hearing is closed. Next item. Yeah. I'm sorry. Thank you. Sorry about that. Oh. Are you a proponent or an opponent? I'm opponent. All right. Uh, go ahead. Your name and address, please. Yes, uh, Luis Jimenez, uh, 3126 Chicago Street. Um, I was here at the um, public hearing for the budget, and I re uh, remember hearing an uh, older gentleman who was ob objected to this. So um, I was surprised to see that, uh, you know, when somebody comes out here to city council and they want to be heard, they weren't being heard, I don't think, with, uh, looks like an advancement of the proposal. I mean, I, I don't know, I'm not, I'm not expert at this. But um, there was opposition to this, and I just want to uh, relay or second that opposition. Thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, next item. We'll take items 68 and 69 together. 68 is ordinance to approve the acceptance and authorize the distribution of a Nebraska Crime Commission Office of Violence Prevention Award uh, to fund a full-time executive director with the Police Athletic for Community Engagement Program. And 69 is ordinance to approve an agreement between the city and the Police Athletic Community Engagement to authorize the funding for this position. Public hearing on agenda items number 68 and 69 are today. Proponents, please. Seeing none, are there any opponents? CNN public hearing is closed. Next item. Item 70, ordinance to approve an agreement between the city and the Women's Center for Advancement to authorize funding for an agreement f uh, from the Stop Violence Against Women grant uh, to fund one full-time bilingual victims advocate and one full-time family law attorney as part of the Douglas County Community Response Team. Public hearing on agenda item number 70 is today. Proponents, please. Seeing none, are there any opponents? CNN public hearing is closed next month. Pursuant to City Council Rule 70, the public hearing agenda items 71 through 80 shall be held on the third reading. Pursuant to City Council Rule 70, the public hearing agenda items 81 through 86 shall be held on the second reading. The motion. Second. Moved and seconded to adjourn. No lights roll call. Jerem, Milton, yes. Falls, yes. Thompson, yes. Chesterson, yes. Gurnett, yes. Mr. President, yes. we stand adjourned at 3.07 p.m.